Welcome to the Fun Facts of Mythology channel. Imagine an emotional scene in which Nicodemus, an elderly man, shares the impactful events of Jesus Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. As a privileged witness, he tells this incredible story to those who seek to hear it. What is surprising is that Nicodemus does not add anything new to the canonical Gospels, which we all already know. However, he mentions a fascinating detail about the crucifixion site, the garden where Jesus was arrested, called Gethsemane, at the foot of the Mount of Olives. At that moment, a new voice joins the conversation, Ananias, a defender of the Praetorian hierarchy and an expert in law. He relates how he found Jesus Christ through faith and underwent holy baptism. After studying the divine scriptures, Ananias discovered narratives about Jesus that the Jews had preserved with Pontius Pilate. But there is something else, he found these narratives in Hebrew and, with divine approval, translated them into Greek. Ananias wants everyone who calls on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to know this amazing story. Therefore, he asks everyone to read and translate these narratives, to remember him and to pray for divine mercy and forgiveness. This moving and inspiring story demonstrates how faith and dedication have the power to accomplish great things. Let's go back to the distant year 15 of the reign of the Roman Emperor Tiberius Caesar, when the world was governed by the peculiar aura of March 25th, the eighth day of the Calends of April. In those days, Herod, the ruler of Galilee, flaunted his authority in the 19th year of his reign, while Joseph Caiaphas, a prominent figure, occupied the post of high priest of the Jews. And it was precisely at that time that Nicodemus, inspired by the scourge of the cross and the torments suffered by the Lord, meticulously wove the narrative of all events to the main priestly leaders and the other children of Israel, having written his story in the sacred language of Hebrew. In the first chapter of this saga, we find the priestly leaders and scribes, gathered in council, including such notable figures as Annas, Caiaphas, Semez, Dothiam, Gamaliel, Judas, Levi, Naphtali, Alexander, Jarius and countless other Jews. Before Pilate they brought a myriad of accusations against Jesus, alleging that he was the son of the carpenter Joseph, born of Mary, and that he dared to call himself the Son of God and King. Furthermore, they dared to impute to him the profanation of the Holy Sabbath and the pretense of abolishing the ancient laws of the patriarchs. Pilate's inquiry into Jesus' actions and intentions was evasively answered by the Jews, who insisted that he used dark arts to heal people on the Sabbath, which, according to the law, was expressly forbidden. Even more, they dared to claim that he expelled demons through Beelzebub, the prince of darkness, characterizing such an act as a profanation. Pilate, for his part, diverged from this narrative and declared that if Jesus performed his healings honestly, there was no malice in it. However, the Jews continued to insist that Jesus invoked the virtue of Beelzebub to cast out demons, an argument they found inconceivable. In the face of this, Pilate concluded that such power could not come from an impure spirit, but from the divine influence of Aesculapius, the god of healing. The Jews asked Pilate that Jesus be brought before their judgment seat for questioning. Pilate was perplexed, questioning how he, a simple governor, could interrogate someone who proclaimed himself king. The Jews denied that Jesus was a king, but claimed that he called himself the Son of God and a king. So Pilate summoned the messenger to convey to the Jews the request that Jesus be presented to him. Upon recognizing Jesus, the messenger revered him and extended his mantle on the ground, inviting him to step over and enter. The Jews were outraged by the messenger's attitude, questioning Pilate as to why he had sent a messenger instead of a simple crier. They further claimed that the messenger had treated Jesus like a king. Pilate then called the messenger and questioned him about his conduct. The messenger explained that he had witnessed Jesus riding a donkey in Jerusalem, as people cheered him and spread branches and his garments on the ground, uttering the words, Save us, you who are on high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Jews questioned the messenger, 
asking how he knew what the Hebrew youths were shouting in Hebrew. They asked if he spoke Hebrew. The messenger explained that he had asked one of the Jews and requested a translation. Intrigued by the situation, Pilate asked the Jews to explain the meaning of each of the Hebrew words. They replied that it meant, Save us, you who are on high, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Pilate questioned whether the messenger had committed any fault and, in the face of the silence of the Jews, decided that the messenger should lead Jesus in the way that seemed best to him. As he entered, those holding the flags bowed and worshipped him. The Jews, upon witnessing this act of reverence and adoration of Jesus, began to hurl insults at those holding the flags. Pilate asked the Jews if they didn't think it was strange that these men would bow down and worship Jesus. The Jews confirmed having witnessed such a scene. Pilate then summoned those holding the banners and asked why they acted that way. They replied that they were Greeks and servants of the deities, therefore they could not worship Jesus. They explained that while they were standing, their bodies spontaneously bowed and worshipped him. Intrigued by the situation, Pilate decided to conduct a test. He ordered the religious leaders to select some strong men to hold the flags and see if they would bend by themselves. The elders chose twelve men and had them hold the flags in groups of six, positioning themselves before the governor's court. Pilate then instructed the messenger to lead Jesus out of the praetorium and reintroduce him, in whatever manner he deemed most suitable. As Jesus left the praetorium, accompanied by the messenger, Pilate called those holding the banners and informed them that if the banners did not bow at Jesus' entrance, he would cut off the men's heads. Then the governor ordered Jesus to enter again. The messenger repeated the same attitude and begged Jesus to pass over his cloak, walking on him. Jesus entered, and as he passed the banners, they bowed again and worshipped him. Pilate was astonished by what he witnessed and asked the religious leaders if they didn't think it was strange that even the banners bowed down before Jesus. However, the religious leaders refused to believe that Jesus was the Messiah and continued to deny his divinity. Pilate was about to leave the courtroom when his wife sent him a letter warning him not to get involved with this righteous man. She had suffered a lot during the night because of him. Pilate then decided to summon all the Jews present and asked if they knew that his wife was pious and inclined more towards good than Jewish customs. They confirmed. Then Pilate read aloud his wife's letter, describing how she had suffered because of the righteous man. However, the Jews were not moved and claimed that Jesus was a magician who had sent a fantastic sleep to Pilate's wife. Pilate then asked Jesus how these men could testify against him if he had anything to say in his defense. Jesus answered, If they didn't have the power to accuse me, they wouldn't say anything. Each one owns his mouth to say good or bad things, and they will see what happens. But the elders of the Jews began to accuse Jesus, claiming that he was the fruit of an illicit relationship and that his birth in Bethlehem resulted in the death of children, in addition to claiming that their parents had to flee to Egypt due to threats in the city. During Jesus' trial before Pilate, some pious Jews who were present claimed that he was not born of fornication, but others disagreed, claiming that he was a magician and the product of an illicit relationship, responsible for the deaths in Bethlehem. Confused by the divergence of opinions, Pilate summoned Annas and Caiaphas to help him understand the situation. They explained that those who claimed Jesus' legitimate origin were proselytes, converts to Judaism, while other Jews claimed that he was the son of fornication and proclaimed himself the son of God. Pilate then called the twelve Jews who defended Jesus' legitimate origin and asked them to swear by Caesar's health that they were telling the truth. However, they refused, claiming that it would be sinful to take an oath. Pilate was perplexed, not knowing whom to believe. Meanwhile, Annas and Caiaphas insisted that Jesus was the son of fornication and a sorcerer. The situation was becoming more and more confused and tense. At this, Pilate decided it was time to have a private conversation with Jesus. But before that, he asked everyone to leave the place, 
except for the twelve who claim Jesus' legitimate origin. After isolating them, Pilate asked the following question. Why do you want to kill Jesus? asked Pilate. The Jews replied, because he heals on the Sabbath, and that is contrary to the law. Pilate was surprised and asked, so you want to kill him for doing good? The Jews' response left him even more confused. Yes, because he doesn't follow our laws and calls himself the Son of God. Pilate, the Roman governor, was under pressure from the Jewish leaders to condemn Jesus to death. However, Pilate saw no reason to accuse him. He tried to get out of the problem by suggesting that the Jews judge him according to their own laws. But they insisted that Jesus deserved death. Pilate then called Jesus into a private conversation. He wanted to know if Jesus considered himself the king of the Jews. Jesus replied, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from this world. Pilate was intrigued and asked, So you are a king? Jesus answered, Yes, but not in the way you might think. Pilate, confused, asked Jesus what the truth was. Jesus replied, Truth comes from heaven, not from earth. Pilate found this strange, stating that he did not find truth on earth. Jesus explained, Those who speak the truth are often judged by the mighty of the earth. Even though he found no guilt in Jesus, Pilate ended up giving in to pressure from the Jewish leaders and condemned him to death. He left the praetorium and went to talk to the Jews outside, claiming that he found no fault in Jesus. However, the Jews accused him of saying that he would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Pilate questioned which temple they were referring to, and the Jews explained that it was the temple built by Solomon 46 years ago. Pilate reaffirmed his innocence regarding the blood of the righteous Jesus, but the Jews insisted on saying, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate summoned the elders, priests, and Levites in secret and declared that he saw no reason to condemn Jesus to death, since the charges were limited to healings and alleged desecration of the Sabbath. However, the religious leaders countered by asking whether someone who blasphemes against Caesar would not be worthy of death. Pilate agreed with this logic, and the Jews argued that if someone blasphemes against God, he would also be worthy of death. Pilate ordered the Jews out of the praetorium and called Jesus privately, asking what he should do. Jesus answered, Do as you were told. Pilate questioned, Is it as I was commanded? Jesus explained, Moses and the prophets of the Lord have already revealed to me about my death and resurrection. The Jews, upon hearing this, accused Jesus again of blasphemy. Pilate suggested that they arrest him for blasphemy and try him according to his law. However, the Jews claimed that, according to their law, anyone who blasphemes against God must be stoned. Pilate addressed the Jews and said, Take him and punish him as you wish. However, the Jews replied, We want him to be crucified. Pilate disagreed, stating, He does not deserve to be crucified. Then he looked at the crowd of Jews present and noticed that many of them were crying. Pilate exclaimed, Isn't the whole crowd wishing him dead? But the elders of the Jews said, We have all come here so that he may die. Pilate asked, And why should he die? And the Jews answered, Because he called himself the Son of God and a King. Nicodemus, a Jew, approached Governor Pilate and asked permission to speak in Jesus' defense. He reported that he had already spoken with the elders, the Levites, and the entire congregation of Israel gathered in the synagogue, questioning what their intention was regarding the man who performed miracles and wonders like no other before. Nicodemus advised them to leave Jesus alone and not to conspire against him, for if his miracles had a divine origin, they would remain firm, however, if they were of human origin, they would fade away. He mentioned that Moses also performed miracles when he was sent by God to Egypt. 
However, the men who opposed him also performed miracles that were considered divine by the inhabitants of Egypt. However, they perished because their miracles were not from God. Nicodemus requested that Jesus be released, as he did not deserve to die. The Jews were indignant at Nicodemus, accusing him of becoming a disciple of Jesus. However, Nicodemus questioned why Pilate also defended Jesus if he was not a disciple. The Jews were furious and Pilate asked why they were so angry when they heard the truth. The Jews told Nicodemus that he must remain with the truth of Jesus. And Nicodemus replied, Amen. Amen. Thy will be done. One of the Jews approached the governor and asked to speak. Pilate granted him the floor and he began to tell his story. I suffered for thirty-eight years, lying on a litter, full of pain. When Jesus arrived, he healed many people who were demon-possessed and sick. Then some young men took pity on me and carried me in my litter to him. Jesus saw me, had compassion and said, Pick up your mat and walk, I picked up my stretcher and started walking. Upon hearing this, the Jews asked Pilate to ask what day he had been healed. The man replied, It was on Saturday. The Jews then exclaimed, Did we not tell you that he heals on the Sabbath and casts out demons? Another Jew came forward and related his own experience, I was blind from birth and could not see anyone. When Jesus passed by me, I cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he had compassion on me. He touched my eyes and I regained my sight. And another claimed, I had leprosy, and he cured me with a word. Another Jew said, I was bent over and he straightened me out with a word. There was a woman named Berenice, also known as Veronica, present at the trial. She approached the governor and began to tell her story aloud. She said that she had suffered from bleeding for twelve years and that when she touched the edge of Jesus' robe, she was healed instantly. Jews tried to dismiss her testimony, claiming that the law did not allow a woman to testify in a trial. Men and women shouted and said, This man is a prophet, and the demons submit to him. Pilate asked those who asserted this why their own teachers did not submit to him. They replied, We don't know. Others claimed that Jesus had raised Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, to great fear. The governor asked the crowd of Jews, Why do you insist on shedding the blood of an innocent man? Nicodemus and the twelve men who claimed Jesus' innocence were summoned by Pilate. The governor asked, What should I do? since there is an unrest among the people. They replied, We don't know. Let them decide. Pilate then called the crowd together and said, You know that I release a prisoner on the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I have two prisoners here, a murderer named Barabbas and Jesus, whom I do not find guilty of. Which one do you want me to release? The crowd shouted, Barabbas. Pilate, sitting on his throne, asked, What about this man called Jesus the Christ? What should I do with him? The enraged Jews cried out, Let him be crucified. Some of them accused him, saying, If you release him, you are not Caesar's friend. He calls himself Son of God and King, defying the Emperor himself. Pilate, irritated, replied to the Jews, You are a rebellious race by nature always opposing those who benefit you. The Jews asked, Who benefited us? Pilate replied, It was your God who brought you out of Egypt, protected you in the desert, gave you the law and fed you with manna. Yet you rebelled against him and worshipped a golden calf. Moses interceded on your behalf, and you were spared. And now you accuse me of being the emperor's enemy. While Pilate was on the throne, a group of Jews approached him, clamoring for Jesus' death. They argued that Jesus proclaimed himself king, which was an affront to Caesar, the Roman emperor. Pilate, pragmatic and concerned about order, summoned Nicodemus and other respected men to testify to Jesus' innocence. However, the angry crowd was not convinced. 
pilot then had an idea. It was customary to release a prisoner during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and Pilate had two men in his custody, Barabbas, a convicted murderer, and Jesus, whom he considered innocent. He asked the crowd which of them should be released, and the choice fell on Barabbas. Pilate was at a loss as to what to do with Jesus, especially when the Jews mentioned the episode where Herod tried to kill a newborn king years ago. He wiped his hands in a basin of water, proclaiming his innocence in the case, but the crowd continued to demand Jesus' crucifixion, and Pilate relented. He ordered Jesus to be scourged according to tradition before being crucified. Furthermore, two other criminals, Demas and Justus, were condemned to be crucified beside him. Pilate did not want to stain his hands with the blood of an innocent man, but neither did he want to challenge the angry mob. So he made the easy decision and handed Jesus over to death. Thank you for following along to this point. If you want the continuation, I ask that you leave your support, liking, commenting and sharing with friends and family. Thus, I will bring you part 2 as soon as possible. See you soon.